Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue building out our Django application and in this third part we're going to focus on building out the user interface. If you haven't seen the first episode, it's linked up here. In this video we are going to cover how to work with views in Django. We're going to learn how to work with templates and also how to raise errors on the user interface. Let's get right into it. Previously we set out our Django app and configured our database, but our app still looks very simple. And in the next step, we're going to focus on building views. And a view in Django is a type of web page that typically serves a specific function and has a specific template that we use. So for instance, we could have a blog homepage, for example, or a comment section, for instance. Those would typically be separate views. And to navigate to those views, we are then going to have a specific URL that we're going to set up to navigate to the view. So let's start out by creating additional views. And we're going to do that inside of the polls app that we created in the views module. So in here we are going to add a new function called detail and that's going to accept the request as before but then we are adding a second parameter to it, the question ID. So depending on the specific question we are looking at we are going to serve different views. Then inside of our function we are going to return an HTTP response just as before but in here we are adding the question ID so a dynamic data point. Additionally, we're going to add a results function that accepts the request and also the question ID. We're going to have a response string and then we're returning both the response and the question ID. And finally, we're going to work with a vote function here. And again, we're using sort of a placeholder text here. So we are returning the string you're voting on the question and then we add the question ID. Now, in order to actually use those views, we have to head over to our URLs module inside of polls and then the urls.py file. And inside of the urls pattern list, we are going to add some additional path entries here to navigate to the specific views and also specify the specific URL to get there. So for instance, when we navigate to the specific question ID here, we are calling the details function that we specified before, which is part of our views module. And we also reference that under the name detail. We are also going to add a second URL here to navigate to the results. So this would be our basic URL again, in our case localhost, then slash and the question ID. So that would, for example, be one or two, and then another slash and results. And then finally, we are also going to display the votes. So for that, we are using the question ID slash vote. And here we are calling the vote function inside of the views module. So let's have a look if this basic setup here works properly. For that, we need to make sure that we start our server again. So again, we're going to type in Python manage py run server. And then with our server started, we can open our browser window. And if we now have a look at polls, and then for example, the ID of a question, let's say 34, and then slash results. So that would be this pass over here, which should then call views.results. So that means that's inside of our views module. Here we have to take a look at the results function, and that should return the response. So you're looking at the results of question and then the question number. And since we're passing the ID 34 in here, we should get that as a value. So let's have a look at that. And here we can indeed see that we get back, you're looking at the results of question 34. Of course, we can also just have a look at a specific question ID, for example, 34. And here we're getting back, you're looking at question 34, because in this case, we would just take a look at the question ID, and that's gonna call the detail function inside of the views module which returns you're looking at question and then the number. And then finally, of course, we also have our vote function here, which is telling us you're voting on the question and then the question ID. And to get there, we need to provide the question ID followed by a slash and then vote. So let's have a look at that and let's type in poll slash 34 slash vote. And here we're getting back that specific string. And just a note on passing that specific question ID here. Inside of our URLs module, we need to make sure that we provide the format in which we want to accept the pass. So here we need to provide an integer value. And then of course we need to provide a variable name. So in this case, question ID. And that's gonna be sent as a keyword argument to the views module. This is why we can use it inside of our different functions here, inside of our views module. So that's working fine, but it's kind of boring. So we want to write views that actually do something. And in general, each view is responsible for either returning an HTTP response object or for raising an error, such for example, a 404 error. So let's use the Django API that we covered in the previous video. 
to display the latest five questions that we created in our polls app. For that, we first of all need to make sure that inside of our views module, we actually import our question class. So we define that inside of our models module. So we can import the question class here. And just to recap, inside of our models module, we define the class question with the question text and the publication date attribute. Now, once we imported that, we can update the index page. And we're starting out by defining a variable latest question list. And here we are querying our questions. So the entries in the database, we are going to order that by the publication date, but actually in reverse order, which is why we are using this minus. And then we want to get the first five entries. After that, we are going to use the join method to join our questions inside of our latest question list that we queried before together, separated by a comma. We're storing that in output. And then we are simply returning the output using HTTP response as before. But when we want to display that, we have one issue, and that is that the page's design is actually hard coded in the view. And we want to modify the way it looks. And for that, we have to edit the Python code. And for that, we are going to use Django's template system to create a custom view. And the way to do that is to head over to our polls app. And here we need to create a new folder, which we're going to call templates. And this is the location Django uses to look for templates. And to tell Django that these templates here are specific to the polls app, we're going to go ahead and we are going to create another directory inside of templates. And we're going to call this polls. So if we had more than one application here, so for instance, maybe aside from the polls app, we have a user app, for instance, and we also use some templates for that. If those templates have the same name as the templates inside of the polls app, then Django might be confused and use the wrong template. And therefore we want to ensure that this does not happen. So inside of templates, we are going to create another directory that has the name of the application that we are working in. Now inside of this subdirectory here, we are going to create a new file and we're going to call it index.html. And here we can now create our template. And inside of this template, we can enter regular HTML, but we can also render out variables or use certain functions. But for that, we need to use this kind of syntax where we have curly braces and then a percentage sign. And inside of that, we have the code that we want to execute. So in here, we have an if statement and we're checking if we have the latest question list. And we're going to end that if statement by an end if. Again, that has to be surrounded by curly braces and a percentage sign. Now inside of this if statement, we are going to have an unordered list. So just a regular HTML element. And inside of that, we are going to use a for loop. So therefore, again, we need to use this kind of syntax. And we're going to loop over all the questions inside of our latest question list. Now and inside of that for loop, we are then going to include a list item with a link and we're going to link to polls and then the question ID. So that's going to differ depending on which question we are looking at. And then we are also going to render out some text to display text that's associated with the variable. We would not use the percentage sign, but instead we are using two curly braces. And then inside of those, we are going to reference our variable. So here's a question text attribute, which of course is an attribute of our question object. And just to think back, if we take a look at our models module, we know that we have our question class. So we instantiated our question class to create an object. And inside of that, we have the question attribute. This is exactly the one that we are querying here. We are also going to add an else statement here. So if our latest question list does not exist, then we're going to simply display no polls are available. Now, once we created the template, we need to update our views module to actually use it. But before we actually reference our template, let's actually have a look at what the default view would look like without using the template. So if we start our server and we head over to our browser and we type in simply the IP address and the port number followed by slash polls under which we run the application and we press enter, we can see a list of all the questions that we created before and they're simply separated by a comma. But of course, we have more flexibility and it will look better once we are working with our template. So to adjust that, we first need to make sure that we import the loader module here, which we need in order to actually load our template. And then we can modify our index function here. We are still going to query the latest question list, but now we are going to use our loader module and we specifically, we are going to use the get template function to get our index.html template that we created. And here, because of the way we set it up, we actually simply have to 
reference polls slash index.html. So we don't have to navigate from polls, templates, polls, index.html, but Django automatically understands when we simply reference polls and then index.html and can probably match that. And then we are also going to provide a context here. And this is going to be a dictionary with our latest question list. And after that, we are simply going to call HTTP response and we are going to call render passing in the context and the request. Now, when we reload the page here, we can see we now have our two questions displayed as a list. And of course they are linked. So if we click on them, we see that we are looking at a specific question. So here question with ID two or the question with ID one. Now when working with Django, it's actually very common to load a template, fill a context, and then return an HTTP response object. And therefore Django provides a shortcut. So for that, we can use the render function. So rather than importing HTTP response and loader, we want to import the render function from Django shortcuts. And then we can go ahead, we can remove the template line here. And rather than returning the HTTP response, we can use the render function and we're gonna pass the request to it, our pass, so polls slash index.html and then the context. Now we're still in using HTTP response for detail results and vote function. So for the time being, we can go ahead and we can either completely comment this out and then also remove it from the pass. Or alternatively, we can simply go ahead and for now just leave it in. So here from django.http, we are going to import HTTP response again and then everything should work properly. And if you go ahead to our browser and we reload the page, everything should work just as before, but it's a little bit more concise. So we can save ourselves writing some code by using this render function shortcut. So let's next tackle the detail function here, which is a page that displays a question text for a question. And here we want to cover the case that a question does exist or that a question does not exist. And then we want to show an error. So for that, we are going to use a try accept statement. So we're first going to try out to query our question by searching for a question where the primary key is equal to the question ID. So if that exists, then it will be returned properly. Otherwise, we need to handle the accept clause. And specifically, we are going to address the case where the question does not exist. And in that case, we are going to raise a 404 error with the text question does not exist. Now, in order to use it, we of course need to make sure that we import HTTP 404. So therefore we need to get back to the top of our file. And here we were using django.http. We can go ahead and we can add HTTP 404. So with that class added in here, this should work properly. And of course, finally, we re need to return the value from the detail function. So here we are going to use our render function again. We're going to return the request then also provide the pass, so poll slash detail dot HTML. And then as a third argument, we are going to provide the question here as a dictionary. Now, and of course, to render our template here, detail to HTML, we need to create that first, that does not exist yet. So we need to go ahead and take a look at our polls template here. Here, we are going to add a new file, which we're going to call detail dot HTML. And in here for right now, we are simply going to render out our question. So that's all we're going to add here. And of course, to render out a variable value, we need to use the syntax with the two curly braces, which surround our variable. So to try this out, we can head over to our browser and we can simply click on a question here. And that is going to show the specific question ID. Now, if we enter a question that does not exist, so for example, a question with ID six, we get a 404 error and we get back the text question does not exist, which we specified before. So it's very common to use get and raise a 404 error. And therefore Django has a shortcut. So here we can go ahead and we can import the get object or 404 function. And then we can navigate over to our detail function. We can remove this try accept block here. And instead we are going to use our shortcut. So our get object or 404. And we need to pass the question class as well as our question ID here to the primary key and then we're going to return that value. So we save a couple of lines of code by doing that. But so far our detail template simply returned the question itself. Typically, of course, we would want to see more information, for example, the different choices associated with a question. So to do that, we can upload our template and for example, display the question text as a heading. And then we can have an unordered list where we list all the different choices that are specific to our question. 
and we're going to display the choice text as a list item. So once we save that and we head over to our browser, can reload the page and then we can have a look at a question, for example, the WhatsApp question here. And now we can see we have a heading displayed here, the question text. And then after that, we see a list of the different options, the different choices that we provided. Now for the template we wrote so far, for example, inside of index.html, we hard coded the URL to go to the question ID by typing out the literal path. But that's actually not the best practice because we may later on want to change our path and then basically this code wouldn't work anymore. So instead we can work with a template tag and we can simply remove this hard coded URL here. And instead we would use again the curly brace and the percent sign, then URL, and then we specify the name of the path. So we can see that if we switch over to the URLs module, we can see we have a name detail over here. And that is the name that's gonna be used. So even if we decide to switch up our path later on, as long as the name stays the same, that will be properly used. And then we also pass the question ID to it. And this is a good way to ensure that our code is easily maintainable. So even if we went ahead in the future and we changed the URL here and we added, let's say, for example, something to our path. So maybe we call it specific slash and then the specific ID here, then our code would still work properly because again, just the name is important as long as we use such a template tag as we do in here. Now on our Django project, we're using a single app called Polls. But if we had, let's say five or maybe 20 different apps, then of course the question is how can Django differentiate the URL names between those? And for that, we would typically go ahead and inside of our urls.py file, we would define a variable app name and we would set it to the name of our app. So in our case, polls. And then to notify our templates that we are actually using the specific app and its routes and not any other app, we can then go ahead and inside of a template. So for example, inside of our index.html template, we can modify this slightly. And in here where we have the name, so the name to detail, we want to make sure that there's no name conflict. So we go ahead and we type in polls colon and then the name of the specific path. And this way it's clear that specific to this particular app. And even if we had a different app with the same path name, we ensure that there's no conflict between those. And this is how we can work with different views. Just to recap, we learned how we can add additional views inside of the views module by defining new functions. Then we learned how we can match those view functions to particular URLs by specifying them inside of the urls.py and adding additional entries to our urls pattern list by using the path function. And then to customize our pages associated with the views more, we learned that we can work with templates. As a shortcut, we used the render function and then we created the templates folder, a subfolder with the name of the app, in our case, polls. And inside of that, we created the different HTML files that we want to work with. And for that, we used the default templating engine in Django. And for that, we needed to use the curly brace and the percent sign to execute some code or to render the value of variables we were using to curly braces. And then inside of our views module, we were using the render function and we passed the request and also the path to the specific template to it, as well as optionally additional context objects, for example, here our latest question list. And then finally, as a best practice, we learned that we can use the URL template tag to avoid hard-coded URLs and to ensure that we are really using the correct paths, especially when we work with a lot of different apps, we saw that we can use a variable app name, set that to the name of our app, and then inside of our URL template tag, we can provide that here as a namespace to make sure that we don't have any conflicts. In the next video, we're going to cover how we can work with forms in Django. So see you guys in the next video.